title of the talk is Scala 3, but I have trust issues. And uh, uh, let's see. if you're still um, not sure which talk to attend, here are the topics uh, I will be talking about uh, briefly. Uh, uh, here are the topics I am actually competent to talk about. Uh, so if that helps. Um, yeah, so uh, I already had an introduction, so uh, here's a short uh, slide about me. So I am uh, a Scala developer at Virtus Lab. I am also a student at Chalmers, and yeah, I've contributed to not the inquire Scala doc Magnolia, uh, some others. Yeah, um, as you saw, uh, some of the topics I mentioned can be pretty elementary, I would say. So here's a problem you can solve if you get bored at any point. So we have uh, a list of names, then a list of pairs of names. Uh, I call it a friendship list, which means that person A is friends with person B, and we have a number K. And the goal here is to find a set uh, of K people, uh, if it exists, uh, such that none of them are friends with each other. And uh, every low polynomial is fine here. So um, n to the third uh, is is a good solution. Right. So I uh, really like um, seeing things uh, on actual examples when I learn about stuff. So we're gonna, going to need some example problem that we're going to solve. And I got inspired by this uh, tweet by, by Max Havel. It was quite a long time ago, but uh, yeah, it says that uh, Google didn't want to hire him, uh, even though he created a software that well, most of the uh, engineers used. So that's why our uh, problem will be inverting trees, binary trees. Well, not, not really this way, but maybe closer to this way. So uh, inverting tree isn't really uh, an advanced topic, but it is. Uh, uh, it isn't also um, very well defined. So this is what we are, uh, want to do. So we want to have a, a mirror image of our tree, input tree. Right. So we can start by um, solving the, the problem in Scala three. Obviously, is in the end the Scala conference. Uh, so right, uh, we need a model, and uh, it's no surprise we're using an enum here, uh, which is, uh, in our case, representing an algebraic data type. We have an <coughs> sorry, uh, we have an empty list, uh, empty leaf. and a node <coughs> that can have a left and a right subtree. And we uh, always uh, contain int uh, just to make uh, things a bit simpler. Right, um, so the solution is also pretty simple. Uh, we have a, a match uh, at the top level of our function. So inviting a leaf is giving us the same leaf. <coughs> and inverting um, a node uh, is just uh, inverting the right subtree and putting it on the left, and inverting the left subtree and putting it to the right. Pretty straightforward. So the third first thing we can do with it to actually test that it works is, well, it's actually really simple that uh, it can be really hard to think about even. It's basically running it. So we create a main function, um, and we just test it for uh, for a, a single uh, uh, case. In our case, it's the, the same as I showed uh, a few other slides earlier in the example. Uh, then we obviously have to run it and compare this printed string. Uh, by hand to see if it's the correct inverted tree. Uh, we're using Scala Light because it's uh, much simpler to, to use in this case. 
Right, so what are the problems with this approach? But we only test one case. We have to uh, check the correctness by hand. And we need to basically, uh, if we want to change, uh, test more things, we have to put them by hand and run it uh, every time ourselves. That's not the way to go. Uh, so next thing we can do, we can, unit, uh, we can write unit tests. So basic idea everyone knows uh, is we, run, uh, we write assertions, we check one case per test, so one model instance in our case. Uh, and we have a predefined set of models that we test because we, we have to write them by hand, right? So uh, not really escaping from that. Uh, so yeah, uh, in our case, um, I'm using MUnit, uh, Scala. I think most of the, uh, or heavy majority of uh, libraries that offer unit testing are uh, migrated to Scala 3. So I'm just using the simplest one. Here are some tests. Uh, it's not really important what they say, but let's go through them uh, very quickly. So uh, inverting a leaf is giving us a leaf, which is similar to a base case in the solution. Inverting a node that doesn't have any subtrees uh, gives us the same node because the mirror image is still the same node. Next, we can check some bigger uh, trees. So uh, we have something that uh, has two levels. And that one actually uh, does something uh, other than identity uh, function. We can test an asymmetric tree, which is just a tree that has only a subtree on the right. And we have, can test some bigger example. Uh, yeah. Uh, we obviously uh, run it as, as before. Uh, and, and it works. Great. So uh, what are the problems here? Well, we have to uh, write every example that we want to test. We have to write ourselves. There's no really a way to generate that. Uh, it's also a lot of tedious work because, uh, well, it usually involves a lot of copying and pasting and uh, the biggest uh, downside is that if we want to test the really big uh, cases, we it gets really complicated because, uh, well, the text editors aren't really supposed to represent tree structures. So uh, as we saw here, it's not that clear that it's a correct uh, tree, even in this case, and we might want to test even bigger ones. Right, so uh, yeah, and obviously the last problem is that's not the only uh, function that satisfies uh, our uh, tests. This is this one also works and it's a bit cooler because it has longer source code, but it's not really what we wanted. Right, so the next uh, thing is uh, uh, trying to uh, uh, trying to, to, to generate uh, uh, more of the uh, cases so that we don't have to write them by hand. So we use property tests and uh, uh, the way we do this is uh, uh, we, instead of testing a correct output to the specific input, we write properties that our function has to satisfy. Uh, and uh, the cool thing here is that uh, the model instances are generated by the framework. So we don't have to write every single case by hand. We can delegate that to some implementation of generators. Right. Uh, also, quite a big uh, selection of libraries here. Uh, I'm going gonna, gonna, gonna to use uh, Scala check because uh, yeah, I, I just have most experience with that. Right. So, uh, as I said, we have to uh, uh, we have to use some sort of uh, generator to generate our um, tests. So this is how how we do it. Uh, I don't really want to get into the uh, implementation that much, but we 
we have a uh, sized uh, generator, which just gets an arbitrary size. Then we generate uh, a tree of that size. Uh, we, we use size because uh, uh, otherwise it can get uh, too big and cause some stack overflow, so st stuff like that. So uh, basically, uh, we need a size to just uh, uh, have some boundary that we don't want to cross uh, when it comes to the depth of the tree. Uh, pretty straightforward. Right, so now we get to the more interesting part, which is writing the properties. And there are many uh, strategies uh, we can use. Uh, I've chosen three uh, to go through uh, for our example and see how, uh, how it works. So the first one is uh, hard to prove, easy to verify. And uh, the best example for it, uh, in my opinion, is uh, sorting. So we get an input uh, input uh, a list, for example. We we have a sort function that we want to test. Uh, and we get the uh, output, which is a sorted list. So the way we, uh, we write our property is we say that for every number in the list, the sorted list, the next one should be uh, higher or equal. So that's probably one of the best uh, properties that we can write because uh, Maybe adding uh, one more, uh, we can we can be sure that our uh, that our code is uh, actually working. Uh, but unfortunately for us, uh, in order to do so, uh, we have to have a verify function that is simpler than our implementation. But our implementation had like um, five lines of code. I don't know if we can go uh, any smaller than that. So. That's unfortunately no for us. Uh, we have we have another um, type of property, which is there and back again. So the idea is we have uh, an input. We have an action A that we want to test, a function in our case. So we say that, OK, if we do A on input, we get a result. Then we can do reverse of A, and we, still, uh, and we get back to the input. So the property will be really simple. Uh, the best example for this is serializing and deserializing. So if we serialize an input uh, to some format and then deserialize it, we should get the same thing as we uh, had in the beginning. Right. Uh, so we can use that. Uh, inverting a tree once gives us what we want, but inverting it twice actually gives us uh, uh, the same thing we, we had in the beginning because it's mirroring the, uh, the tree twice, right? So we write the property just says that for all trees, we invert it twice and we get the same thing as, uh, as in the beginning. And we use our uh, arbitrary instance to generate the trees. But not as complicated. Uh, so uh, last uh, type of property we're going to check. So uh, this one says, uh, this one is different paths, same destination. Uh, and what it does, it simply says that, okay, if we do A and then B, then we get some result. But we want to have the property that if we do B and then A, it gives us uh, the same result. Well, we can't really do this because we only have one function, but then we can do something similar. So we can say that if we invert a tree for so for any for any tree that we get, uh, if we add a root to it only to, and add our tree to the right and add nothing to the left, and then invert it, is the same as having uh, adding a root and putting the inverted tree on the left. It's getting very close to the implementation, but for the purpose uh, of uh, our test, we can write a property like this. Right, uh, we run it again. Uh, it works, runs uh, more than just five tests as we uh, did before. So what are the problems? 
Well, we have to write the generators ourselves, and that's very tedious work. Uh, also, adding the fact that our uh, our class, our enum, was actually really simple. I mean, it was one base uh, base case and one uh, uh, case that actually took uh, three as uh, um, as an argument. Uh, yeah, and also we may be a stretch, but we run a finite number of tests. We run 100 by default in, I think, every uh, props uh, uh, property testing library, but we might do better. Right. So the next step would be using a proof assistant to prove that our uh, implementation is actually correct. Yeah, so first the choice we need to make uh, in order to actually use uh, a proof assistant uh, here is we have two ways to go. Uh, first one will be to translate our program to the proof assistant, our language. Uh, and the second would be to model uh, the whole scale tree in the proof assistant. Well, the first one is obviously easier and we can do it in our case. Uh, plus, I don't really know of any full uh, models of uh, scale tree uh, only some partial ones uh, uh, for the purposes of uh, some papers. So we're going we're going to go with uh, the first uh, the first way. Yeah, the cho choice B would be um, to actually uh, figure out which assistant we want to use. So on the right we have Agda, and on the left we have well a French word for rooster. Uh, and since it's my first sort of bigger uh, conference talk, I don't want it to be the last. I'm not gonna uh, risk it. So uh, yeah, uh, we, we will go with Agda. Uh, right, so as I said, we need to uh, map our solution to Agda. Right, so on the left we have uh, our Scala 3 solution, and on the right we have uh, uh, our Agda uh, trans translation uh, of it. So uh, looks pretty similar in the structure. I mean, we have the model here, the model here, and we have function here and function here. Looks pretty okay. Let's let's look a bit in more detail uh, at it. So the first thing we have in Agda is uh, a definition of our uh, data structure. So we uh, we see that uh, we say that uh, we declare a tree that is of type set. That's that part may be a bit confusing. Set in Agda is just a set of all types. So we're just saying that tree is a type. Right, and we have two cases for our algebraic data type. Um, we have a leaf that is just a tree, and we have a node that takes a tree and the tree and gives us a tree. So basically the same thing as we had in Scala. Uh, now we have uh, our solution function. So the signature is looks pretty simple. It just takes a tree and gives us a tree back. Right. And uh, inverting it, we use uh, pattern matching on the left side of the implementation. So uh, we say that inverting a leaf is a leaf, just like in Scala. And inverting a node is uh, a node with right, uh, inverted uh, right subtree on the left and inverted uh, left subtree on the right. Uh, so exactly what we had in uh, Scala. Right, so now we get to the uh, more interesting part, which is uh, program source proofs. So uh, th this is a concept uh, in uh, Agda, uh, which basically says uh, on very uh, abstract level that we have types, uh, and in types we uh, write propositions. Propositions are conditions that we want our, uh, our functions to meet, uh, and the elements of those types are proofs. So the idea is if it compiles, then it works. Uh, this is just an example, but we get into more details. Uh, right. Um, for the purpose of uh, this talk, we're going uh, we're going to use uh, 
uh, an equivalence relation. Uh, yeah, so that is uh, uh, that is basically the relation of things that are equal to each other. So if we take a closer look at the definition, uh, we can ignore this part. This part basically declares uh, uh, a type uh, parameter. So we say that for any A, that is a type. Uh, our uh, equivalence relationship uh, takes uh, an X of type A and gives us a function of A to the set. So basically, it says that it can create a type from two A's uh, if they are uh, equal. And the only way we can construct them is using reflexivity. So we're saying that x is equal to x, which is obvious. So in this case, x will be here, x will be here, and it gives us our equivalence uh, relationship. Uh, not that complicated. Right, so now that we know of it, we can use it uh, on, uh, for example, Boolean uh, expressions, just to get a hang of it. So you can declare a condition which says that not false and true is equivalent to true. And since we only have one way of uh, actually um, constructing such types, we say that the proof is use reflexivity. And it works. Agda doesn't complain. Uh, it says that, well, it obviously is true because we can uh, resolve this to uh, true. True and true is equivalent to true. But we can do it uh, also for any uh, Boolean. So if we take a B Boolean, we can say that true or a Boolean or, or just arbitrary Boolean is equivalent to true. And we say, OK, we ignore the type. We just say that use uh, reflexivity. And it still works. Uh, unfortunately, if we do it the other way, so we have a uh, Boolean or a true, uh, it doesn't work that simply, because uh, the way uh, or is defined, uh, it has uh, it pattern matches on the left argument. So in our case, it tries to match any of those uh, definitions. And since it can't because we don't know what B is, we have to match on B if it's true and use reflexivity. If false, also use reflexivity. Right. So now that we had that, we can uh, go to the maybe uh, more useful part, which is we can now write our unit test on the type level. Yes. Uh, right, so we can uh, take our first test and say that invert tree leaf is equivalent to leaf. And the proof is obvious because we know everything at compile time. And Agda just proves, yeah, okay, that's true. Uh, second example, we can uh, uh, take a more complicated tree uh, and say that is equivalent to its inverted part. Uh, counterpart, and we say, okay, use reflexivity, Agda doesn't complain. So it works. So now what about proving uh, properties uh, of our codes? It obviously should be uh, much better than actually testing our properties. Uh, so we can uh, start with our first uh, uh, or actually second, I think, uh, property, which is adding this uh, this node and then inverting the subtree. Uh, we say that for every tree, uh, we want that inverted tree uh, with adding a root uh, to it is equivalent to the node that we create for the inverted tree on the left this time. And we can use reflexivity, it works again. Amazing. Well, if we try to do the same thing uh, with uh, double inverting, we actually uh, get an uh, error from Magda. And it says that invert tree, invert tree t 
is not equal to t. Well, it is, but we have to help Agda a bit in this case. Because what it does, it just uh, expands those definitions. And it, it expands invert tree once, it expands invert tree twice. But from the definition, we get that uh, we, still, uh, we still have uh, some invert tree uh, uh, usages left in the arguments. Uh, that's why we have to uh, uh, help out a bit here. So we match on the leaf, and leaf is pretty straightforward. Uh, nothing surprising here. And uh, if we match on the node, uh, we have to use a congruence. So this is just a function that basically says, if I have a proof that x equals y, and I have a proof that u equals uh, v, then I can apply those to a function, and they still uh, the result is still uh, equal, and I get a proof for that. So in our case, we just say I uh, double invert L, double invert R, and I just construct a node from it using the congruence. Cool. So are there any problems here? Well, we do actually need to know how to uh, translate the code. And we can't always do it. Uh, we have to um, think about that before we start uh, writing our code. Uh, well, and we have to trust Agda that it actually works correctly. Uh, to be fair, with, so uh, so do we with Dotty generating the right uh, bytecode. So now we can uh, get to the uh, last uh, serious uh, way of proving it, and that would be pen and paper proof. So what that, does our code actually mean? Well, this enum actually declares an algebraic data type. An algebraic data type is an inductive set in mathematics. So we can translate that. So we say that leaf is a tree, and we say that if we have uh, e and int, uh, l a tree, r a tree, then node L uh, ER is uh, a tree. Nice. Uh, we can also translate the solution, which is much simpler. Uh, that's just a recursive uh, function. Uh, that is of type uh, tree to tree. Uh, very similar to the way we uh, use it in Agda. Right. So now the uh, double invert property is actually uh, can be uh, written as uh, um, as a mathematical uh, property, which is for every tree we want to say that uh, t is equivalent to inverting the t twice. Cool. Uh, so uh, we are getting a bit uh, late in time, so I go quickly through it. So the way we prove it is we use uh, a structural induction. So we say that. Uh, t is a tree, so if uh, t is a leaf, then we want to prove that invert invert leaf is equivalent to leaf. So we start with that, then we can uh, apply the definition of our invert tree, which said that uh, invert leaf is just leaf. So we we apply it to the inside of this uh, uh, parenthesis, and then we apply it again, and we get. Uh, uh, get what we wanted, get uh, a leaf. Otherwise, it has to be a node. So we get uh, two uh, inductive hypotheses. One says that, R, uh, that the, our property uh, holds for R, and the other one says that our property holds for L. Uh, L. So we start uh, just as uh, before us uh, with the right hand side. Uh, we cannot uh, now apply the definition of invert tree to the inside of the bracket. So we get the right hand side of uh, uh, our uh, invert tree definition. Uh, now uh, we can apply it again. So we get node on the top, and we have inverted uh, trees on the left, inverted uh, double inverted trees on the right. And it, this is uh, very similar to the uh, the thing we did uh, with uh, Agda. 
Uh, so uh, here we can use our uh, inductive hypothesis. It says that this thing is equivalent to L and this thing is equivalent to R. So we use it twice and we get what we want it. Oh, right. Uh, so what the problem is here? Well, uh, it's a lot of manual work. Uh, I mean, uh, we have to write a lot of stuff, and it's also really hard to incrementally update. It's not like we have uh, an automation that, that can check if, uh, if, a, if a proof by hand is correct. So what if that's not enough? What if we need a bit more to uh, to get a bit uh, of trust in, in our colleagues or in our code? Well, uh, we can use something I call uh, trust exercises. So if we see a pull request uh, that has this div, we can just, without reading it, say that looks good to me. And that is the definition of trust in a team. I mean, who wouldn't want that? Yeah. So. Uh, Maybe try that until you get fired, probably. But worth a try. So the next thing is uh, quite obvious. It's therapy. Um, I mean, uh, here's a short how to, if we actually need some help. Yeah, so conclusions. Uh, well, I promised a solution uh, for the friends problem. So here it is. Uh, here's the description again. Uh, we can actually sort of change it a bit uh, to uh, so the thing I uh, explained uh, explained the definition was actually uh, a definition of uh, of some input that is a graph basically uh, so we can say that we just get a graph G and a number K and we want a set of nodes of size K uh, such that none of them are adjacent to each other and that is not a friend's problem. That's an independent set problem. And uh, that one is NP, NP complete. So if someone did manage to solve it, then you can DM me. That would make me $1 million. Uh, right. So some takeaways. Uh, so write unit tests for all functionalities, uh, uh, assuming you don't want to get fired. Uh, Properties test only for most critical things. Uh, uh, proofs aren't uh, really uh, that common and you don't really need them that much, but uh, uh, if you do want to prove uh, uh, of your code, then uh, probably uh, think about it beforehand. Uh, and the pen and paper proof is obviously a better uh, a bit uh, more like a way to think about your code instead of actually using it. And use Scout read, it's really great. And in reality, uh, in the end, someone will always try to uh, pass a null to it and it will fail with, well, in this case, much other. Yeah, so thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.